والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم بسم الله الحمد لله and welcome to this episode of beauties of islam i'm yusuf estes and for the next few minutes let's continue talking about the real beauty of islam which is allah allah is the beauty of islam he is the focus of every single muslim's thoughts and worship throughout every single day the muslim is taught to pray to allah alone without any partners not to make any images or any kind of semblance or anything which is like allah anything that you do like that in islam is considered heresy it's considered blasphemy to make partners with allah because what that is essentially is called shirk in arabic language allah says about that subject in the quran in chapter 4 he tells us that shirk is something that he is not going to forgive he will not forgive shirk but anything less than this that he can forgive this means something very important to us it means that we need to know who allah is and who he is in some of our programs we discussed that allah is the light of the heavens and the earth we talked about the fact that he is the all hearing and the all seeing and we discovered that his attributes his characteristics isma wa sifa as it's called in arabic are in fact total and complete and they are the epitome the continuing whereas everything in the creation is not everything in creation changes is that true but allah says in the quran that he's the only thing that doesn't change in fact this is the one thing about allah that we understand he doesn't change he is consistent he is always and the always and continuing thing is the face of allah this is in the quran From this we understand that the creation has a beginning and it has an end but Allah is without beginning and without end Allah is the real nur as-samawati wal ard he is the real light of the heavens and earth he's the light behind he's the light which permeates he is the light Ah uh, no some people might say well okay now we say that Allah is in the creation this is something that we talked about in another program but again I want to elaborate on that <laughs> if we said that Allah is in the creation literally he himself is the creation like the creation or in the creation this is a big mistake you know what's going to happen if we do that think about it <laughs> it means that A person would say Allah is in the clouds Allah is in the heaven Allah is in the rainbows he's in the beautiful things that we see now a disbeliever an atheist someone who doesn't believe in God at all what's he going to tell you oh so God's everywhere you say yes God is everywhere he'll say is God in your toilet oh what a horrible thing to say is he in the hiv virus aids oh this is something terrible nuclear waste disease is he in the ugly things that happen is he in the hurricanes they'd be like uh well uh now what by putting a law in the creation or like the creation what happens is that a disbeliever finds more excuses to disbelieve and even try to confuse the believer but allah has made it clear that his attributes are not like anything you can really imagine he's only giving you something to think about so that when you want to reflect on allah and think about allah you have something beautiful to consider for instance we know allah is al wadud he's the loving his love is eternal his love is ongoing his love is something that's all encompassing and all engulfing This is his love, Al Wadud. But we still don't say God is love. Why? Because Al Wadud is something more than love. It's loving. It's ongoing. It's eternal. It's not just like a place on a map. No. 
Allah is not love as in down the street and turn the corner and there he is. No, that's not <laughs> that's not the concept that we're talking about in Islam. When we talk about al wadud Allah tells us in the Quran that he's al wadud the loving, and yet at the same time he tells us there's nothing like him. There's no love like Allah's love. It is such a beautiful thing to consider how Allah is all of the things that he is and yet never like anything that we could define. All the things in creation have a beginning and end. They have shortcomings. They have problems with them. They have high points, low points. But Allah doesn't have that. Allah has something even more important. He has a continuing total foundation of everything that he is. So now that we've understood that, and we've realized that there isn't any way to really compare to Allah, yet we know that he's given us some parables to help us to understand a little bit. Now the most important thing becomes how to worship Allah. And we must worship him on his terms, the way that he wants to be worshipped. And in some of our programs we discussed that as well. I want to take one break now because I've talked to you a lot about the subject of Allah, I want to come back now and talk about how we can begin to learn to worship Allah on his terms. So here's what you do. You sit back, relax, make a note of the website, by the way. Beautiesofislam.com. We'll be back right after this. Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. Brothers and sisters, to increase your email. من تعلم القرآن وعلمه ورت للقرآن ترتينا Learning how to recite the Quran properly Learning the meaning of what we recite Concluding the ahkam from the verses which we recite Trying to implement what we learn in our daily life We we'll listen to the participants and the guests We'll take your phone calls We're going to recite life We'll listen to your recitation and will correct it according to the rules and regulations which will state in each episode. Now, your dream will come true. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, we're back. You're watching the beauties of Islam. And we've been talking about who Allah is and who Allah isn't. We've understood now that Allah doesn't compare to his creation. He's not like anything that he's made. We know now that he is eternal and always. He's without beginning, without end. This is not really something new to the believer. Those who believe as Jews or children of Israel, those who believe as Christians or followers of Christ, and those who believe as Muslims believing in the one true God. It makes sense. It doesn't go against any real logic to understand that Allah has a presence and at the same time he physically is not present. And he has these great qualities, and yet at the same time, his qualities don't compare to anything that we as humans could imagine. So his creation is something that isn't all that great. It isn't all that special. It isn't to be worshipped. In fact, he alone is the only one to be worshipped. Now we come to another fork in the road here, so to speak. And that is... Do I go this way or do I go that way? How do I worship him? Some people are telling me do this or that and exactly which way do I go and how can I worship him? Or how about if I just make up some worship of my own? Maybe he would like for me to um, do sit-ups five times a day. Maybe that would be real nice and he'll accept that as worship. Or maybe just do some good deeds. I think a good deed would mean to go and mow my neighbor's lawn every other day. And I'll consider that an act of worship. And, well, these are good things to do. And you might have blessings with that, no doubt. But what is the ritualistic worship required, if any, to be a true believer and one who is following this and then worshiping God according to his, his will. 
Something that we as Muslims know about is the will of Allah. We know that he has a will. He wants things done his way. Now, the things in the creation that he orders to be done will be done exactly that way. But for you and I, we have choices that we can make every day whether or not we want to follow his will. For instance, a flower will grow exactly the way he wants it to go and die on the day that he wants it to die. A tree will grow as he wants it to grow and it will blossom and flourish out the way he wants it to and live for exactly as long as he wants it to live. But then at a certain time, that tree will die. The same is true as of a human to an extent will be born when he wants us to be born, will die when he wants us to die. But in between those two times, we sure get to make a lot of choices, don't we? But one of the most important choices of all, if not the most important choice, is to decide I need to worship him and it needs to be on his terms, his way. Now, what's his way? The way to worship the one creator and sustainer of the universe is according to the way he wants it done. But how could I know what that is? Can I make that up? It would be no more possible to do that than it would be to imagine God in the way that I want to imagine him. This means that I can't make up God and I can't make up the religion or the way to get to him. Both of these things must be revealed by him to me. It's his responsibility. It's up to God, Allah, to show me who he is, who he's not, and then how to get to him and what to avoid that would take me away from him. Does that make sense? All of this is what we've been talking about through our programs, The Beauties of Islam. Because when you understand this, it puts a peace or sakina or tranquility in your heart to know that this is the one true God. In fact, Allah and the only way to get to him. There are five things that are essential to understand and put into practice to reach your worship to him, almighty God. The first is a surrender to him. Everything in my life, I surrender to him. I give it up to him. Not 99%, 100%. The next is submission, total submission to what he wants, his way, to learn what he wants me to do and then submit to that and obey his commandments. He's given me commandments, I need to obey them. Then this word, sincerity, I must have total sincerity for him. And do it whether anybody's watching or not. Do it because this is what I really want to do for him. Now, if I do the four, which is surrender, submit, obey, in sincerity, then this one comes. What is this one? This one is called peace, salam. And I will never get this peace between me and him until I do the other four. So if I want peace between me and Almighty God, I have to surrender, submit in sincerity, totally, completely to his will. This then would be Islam because the word Islam means that exactly. So now we know who is Allah and we know how to get to Allah. We're going to have more programs like this, so be sure and come back right here to this place so that you can get more about the beauties of Islam. And don't forget our website too, Beauties of Islam. Dot com. See you there. Peace. Assalamu alaikum. Islam is peace. Islam is peace.